Well, hello everybody. It's Brother Todd with your Victory Minute. I hope you guys and gals are having a great day out there. Uh, yesterday, I started talking a little bit about uh, growing in your ability to, to share the gospel with somebody. And we kind of just started on, on point number one. To me, I think the three things that everybody needs to be able to grasp if they are going to be saved is, number one, that there's a problem, okay? i.e. there is a need okay i have a need that only god can fix okay number two that god is willing and able to fix that problem okay through salvation and what he did on the cross uh and then three that there has to come a time where somebody believes enough to act okay you have to move from just intellectual assent uh, to the point that you're actually acting on faith. And the Bible gives us some examples of what that looks like. So yesterday I started talking a little bit about the reality of yeah, we, we, have to we have to recognize that God's provision to save people is that he only saves lost people. And you say, now, Brother Todd, I got that. If you listen to yesterday, I talked a little bit about that. But what, what I mean by saying that is if somebody does not recognize lostness, they will ultimately never respond in faith towards salvation because there is no, if they don't recognize this, they don't perceive that there is a need for salvation. So you have to come to a point where you're willing to admit to God, let me use that word admit, admit to God that that you are a sinner or that someone has sin in their life, okay? I talked a little bit yesterday about how uh, kind of, you have to watch the one from tomorrow, uh, from yesterday, it's 22 minutes long. I don't wanna make this in that long today. But but you we, we have to come to a point and when you're talking to somebody about Christ, this is first step. If somebody does not recognize need, everything else you're going to say before later, while it may bear witness in their mind and they may put two and two together later on, the, the first step is that they have to recognize need. And so a lot of times you'll hear preachers, you'll hear people that have, that have uh, developed different programs to help people lead other people to Christ. Uh, you, 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 you hear a lot of times the ABCs, okay? You have to admit you're a sinner. You have to believe that Jesus save you have to see confess i think that's a some little bit short-sighted but at least it gets it kind of the point across okay when god talks to us about sin he never debates it he just says that we are but what people have to recognize beyond just well yeah i know i could do better or yeah i know i got wrong in my life if you're following me is that we have to take the full step and that is not only that we admit that we're sinners but that we recognize that 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 has created a problem, okay? The problem I would, the word I would use would be separation, okay? That we are, we are separated. We, Jesus said we are condemned already, okay? We are under sin, okay? And, and anything under sin is gonna be under the wrath of God, okay? Anything under his grace is gonna be just that, under his grace, under his mercy, and that's where, that's where we want that's where, as believers, we bec that's where we are, and it's where we want others to come, okay? So it's not just admitting, and I talked a lot about this yesterday, just coming to the conclusion that, that I'm a sinner, or how do you help somebody just, just see that, that, that fact? And then, but helping them to understand that, that this sin has created a problem. Now, yesterday, when I was, I was, we were doing this minute, I completely butchered Isaiah 1, 18. And uh, I just left it in there so that you understand, you know, sometimes you're just going to mess up. And I've been getting texts uh, that just say Isaiah 118 on them and stuff like that. And, and people sending different ones because, it, you know, it's always fun when the preacher messes up. And I'll probably mess up again when I say it. But the verse, just let's just start there today. Look, think about it. Isaiah 118 says, uh, come, let us reason together, says the Lord. Okay, though your sins be as scarlet, I'll make them white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, I'll make them white like wool. <laughs> I got that out straight. Okay, but you, what, do you see there that one, God is not debating the fact that we're sinners. Okay, let's reason together. Though your sins are red like crimson, they're there. Okay, they're, they're, they're like scarlet. They're like crimson. They glare. It stands out. There's a problem. Okay. But he says, I'll take it and I'll change it. Okay, moving from red to white, just as a 
a picture of, you know, a lot of times the word of God will use the word uh, like white robes of righteousness. It just means clean. And so he said, there's obviously a stain. Okay. And, and I can fix that stain. Okay. We have to recognize if you look into some scripture and here, if you're kind of, if you're wanting to kind of follow along with me, get you a pen and paper out. Uh, in fact, if you want to just hit the pause, get you a pen and paper out. I'm going to give you some verses. Okay. I'm going to give you some verses that, that will help you get into your memory that you can share with people so that they recognize my sin has created a problem. Okay. All right. In three, two, one, hit pause. Three, two, one. All right, you're back. Okay. So I just put these over here on my screen so I get, tell them to you exactly, okay? Sometimes I tend to paraphrase when I quote. But write down Isaiah 44, 22. Isaiah 44, 22. Okay. Write down Micah 7, 18. Micah 7, 18. Write down Romans 5, 20. 5, 20. Romans 5, 20. And Ephesians 1, 16. Okay? No, not 16. I just said that wrong. 6. Isaiah, Ephesians 1, 6. Boy, I ain't had enough coffee today, guys. Okay? So I'm, you got those down. You can go back and, and, and you don't have to write down the exact verse. You you go find it. You find it, you know, when you, on your Bible app or uh, uh, or in your Bible, however, you, however you're doing it. Okay? Isaiah 44 and 22. Listen to this verse. I have blotted out like a thick cloud your transgressions, and like a cloud your sins return to me, for I have redeemed you. Okay, so what's that saying? Let me get this thing to act right. Okay, what's that saying? It's saying that that, this, that God has, is, is willing and has covered our sins because why? There was a problem there, a problem there in his sight. Okay. Micah 7 and 18. Listen to this verse. Who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He does not retain his anger forever. So there's a problem with our sin, but he delights in mercy. It's not just that we're sinners, but that God has a problem with it. Okay? One of the big reasons, guys, that you, that the, the, the whole world is being pushed down right down our throat this idea this remember it's a theory of evolution the reason it's being taught by fact even though it it lacks so much scientific evidence i said well, if you believe science you follow evolution i'll tell you what if you genuinely believe science then there's there's too many holes in evolution it takes more faith to believe in evolution than it does in jesus but anyway the the, the reason is behind that is because they have to remove the idea of a creator because if you can remove the idea of a creator, you remove the idea of being morally responsible to said creator. Does that make sense? Even if you're not a Christian, just, just catch it from an intellectual standpoint. If I can remove the creator, then I can remove the idea that I may very well be morally responsible to that creator. Okay? This verse I just was reading lets us know that our Creator does is holy and does have a problem with sin. Okay, okay, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. So somewhere there's we don't measure up. But what does He say in verse 19? He will again have compassion on us and will subdue our iniquities. You will cast all our sins into the depth of the sea. So you see that? What what does God want to do? There's a problem in sin, but God wants to fix the sin. Okay, God can fix a sin. It's not step two. He's willing and able. Okay, but we have to recognize that that sin has created a separation. Not just, oh, bro, Todd, I know I'm, I've got problems. But no, but that those problems have created a problem. We're born under sin, under the sin of Adam. You said, bro, Todd, I don't like that. Well, the good thing is, just like in Adam, all die, in, in Christ, all can live, Paul talked about. Okay. But the other thing is, is that we're, the Bible says we're a few days and full of trouble. And so that means we have, we have our own personal sin, not just, uh, you're just born under original sin, okay? Personally, without just getting too theological here with you, I believe Jesus died for original sin when he died on the cross. Now, I got news for you. Now, you recognize right now need, then God's allowed you to come, he's giving you more, he's allowing you to make choice. 
and you're responsible for your choices. If God's letting you know about sin and separation, then you're making a choice, I'm going to stay in it or I'm going to come out of it. Okay, and that means that's our responsibility. That's where our free will comes in. Okay, you cannot have free will without consequences. Think about it. Everybody wants free will, but nobody wants a consequence. Okay, the reality is, guys, you can't do what you want without it having a consequence. It'll do good or bad. Okay, if I want to go rob a bank because I'm just too lazy to work, I'm going to go get me some money. Okay, I can't be upset when I get caught and I get thrown in jail. Why? Because my free choice created consequences that everybody else in society didn't like. Okay? It makes sense. I won't bog you down too bad. Romans 5.20 and 5.21. Moreover, the law entered that the offense may abound. Okay? but we, So the law came along. The law didn't set us free. In fact, the law made us more guilty. Read Sermon on the Mount. You'll come out of it feeling more guilty than you started. Okay? Jesus is establishing guilt. He's establishing the fact that we need help. We need a Savior. What's he doing? He's trying to get us to understand we have a need. Same thing we're trying to do with anybody that's lost we're talking to. We, we have to understand they have a need. So that sin reigned all the way to death. Listen to this, though. Even so grace might reign through righteousness of eternal life to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay? Problem, solution. But the, there's a problem. Getting it? The problem creates a need. I'm separated. Ephesians 1 6, really verse 7 and 1 6, 7, 8. Ephesians 1 6, 7, 8, if you wrote it down. Okay? Listen to this. This is in the introduction part of. Uh, I'm going to turn this thing off. Oh, oh, what it's, it's running all over the place. To the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. So he said, was a problem, but now we're accepted in him, speak, speaking of Jesus. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. In other words, when you're rich, you have more than enough, right? So he's got more than enough grace for us, in which he made to abound towards all of us in wisdom and prudence. So he made that abound. What were we, though? We were outside, and then something came along and brought us in. That's the need. That's the need. We have to move. So you say, Brad Talk, why are you telling me all this? I'm telling you, see how long I've been talking, I had too long. I'm trying to go as fast as I can today. So the so the reality is, is that when we're talking to someone about Christ and, and or them, is that they yes, they have to come to a point where they admit they're sinners. They admit you know there's wrong, but that but that that sin has created the problem of separation. That unless God does something, you look at all those verses, none of it's based on us. Unless God does something, we never get rid of the problem. I said yesterday or a few days ago, a statement I made quite a bit, that guys, one of the reasons I'm a Christian, okay, is the the fact that one of the reasons I'm a Christian is that every religion on this planet, say, Brother Todd, how do you know Christianity's the one true way. One of the reasons I know that is because every religion on this planet is based on doing something except Christianity. Now, a lot of times people in church call themselves churches or whatever, teach doctrine of works salvation, a works-based salvation. In other words, you, you do something so you're owed something. That's what religion is false religion is based on I don't I don't care whether it's you name your favorite worldwide religion okay I'm not here to condemn people I'm just here stating fact it's based on doing enough to be what accepted fixing this need the need we've talked about okay I have enough number one I have a need what is my need I am a sinner and because of my sin I'm separated from God so what does mankind do? Mankind comes along and invents all these different mechanisms whereby we can do enough to be pleasing to our Creator. If the problem is the Bible lays it out in no uncertain terms that there's no way to be that good. You say, well, Brother Todd, God shouldn't assume that we can't do that. Well, guys, you pick up your Bible. Pick up the pages of human history. We live, frankly, with the perspective of being able to look back on it and going, yeah, yeah he's right. Okay? That's why the law in the Old Testament came 
1,500 years it rained. 1,500 years. God gave them this conditional covenant of if you do this, I'll do this. And if you do that, I'm going to do that. Blessing and cursing, life and death. Okay? It's a conditional covenant. The, we call it the Mosaic covenant come under Moses. It, but we can't live up to it. And in Jesus' days, there was a group of running around called Pharisees that if you look at the real what was going on in their hearts and lives, they, frankly, they were all just a bunch of lost people. But guys, in their day, everybody thought they were living absolutely perfect. They, they, took, they, they weren't even satisfied with doing the real strict things of the law. They added to it. Things like, you know, not only not working on the Sabbath, but not walking across a plowed field on the Sabbath for lest it be interpreted that somebody's, you know, tilling the field and all that kind of stuff. It's what Jesus was messing with them so, so bad. He's, Christ could use sarcasm as good as anybody ever was, an exaggeration. But, which frankly back then was Hebrew, was humor. But anyhow, I got time to talk about all that. I'm trying to go fast. So they were so worried about not eating any of the, uh, anything that was unclean that they would take and strain through a strainer their, their glass of wine so that they didn't swallow a gnat, okay, which was considered unclean, okay. So they would, Jesus said, "Y'all strain at gnats, but you swallow camels, which were also considered unclean." Okay, you see what he was trying to tell them? Y'all are so busy trying, thinking that you're doing it, but you miss the real important things because they weren't in, they weren't working in mercy. They weren't they 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 they, they had left off grace. They had left off that kind of goodness. When Christ comes and preaches a sermon on the mount, guys, the first. Chapter 5, all he's doing is establishing guilt. Well, I, Bert, I, people tell me all the time, Brother Todd, ain't like I killed somebody. Well, Jesus said if you've been angry with your brother, you've already committed murder. If you've looked at a woman with lust in your heart, you've already fornicated with her. Right? What was he? What is he doing? Is he just trying to make us feel bad? No, he wants us to recognize need. All false religion is based on doing enough to be accepted. Back to my, I've been rambling, but Brother Todd, why... Is one of the primary reasons you're a Christian then is because Jesus doesn't come and say do. He says believe. Now there's a lot of churches again running around out there that try to get in partnership with you. Jesus saves us by grace and we're kept by works and all that kind of nonsense. You need to read the book of Galatians. But anyway, what Paul talked about it, he said if God saves us by what we do, that's a wage. In other words, I'm owed it. You following me? It's not grace. It's something that I'm owed. If I, one of the things I can't stand is a man will have people working for him, a woman have people working for him. And when they give them their paychecks, they act like they're doing them a favor. Well, I got news for you, friend. You ain't doing them a favor if they worked for it at, an, at a wage that y'all agreed upon. And then they did the work and you give them the money. That's a fair exchange. You don't, people don't owe you anything. Okay? It's like going to the bank. Bank acts like he's done you a favor by giving you a loan that he's charging you interest on, that he's making money on. That's always the weirdest thing I've ever seen. You know, the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life, right? Well, I've done him a favor. <laughs> favor you do? You made money off of him, okay? Somebody, somebody works for you. What is it? It's owed, okay? So it can't be grace if it's owed. Right? We could work our way out. The Bible's clear. There's a problem. We can't fix the problem. You read any scripture about sin, okay, causing separation, and when you keep reading and you see where the solution is, the solution will always be something God does. Okay? So that's how you transition it. You're talking to somebody. Let me wrap this up. You're talking to somebody, and they, they yes, yeah, I'm a, I'm a sinner. Yeah, sure. He ain't taught. Okay. But do you recognize it's caused a problem? And as soon as they can get that, then we can go to step two, which is what? That God is willing and able to save us. Okay? We'll talk about that some next week. May even get into it some over the weekend. I may even put some of these out during the weekend. I normally don't do that, but I'm, I, want to, I want you to be able to get through this. Okay? Write those scriptures down. Kind of get them in your head. Remember, I said yesterday, if you didn't get to hear it, you need to really be reading the, the first five chapters of Romans. Get it down. It'll help you as much as anything in dealing with somebody that may or may not pose objections to the fact that you're saying God says you're a sinner. Okay? Because people have a problem with that now. <laughs> Remember, they crucified Jesus over 
Them the Pharisees used to get so mad. Jesus, they thought they could see Jesus called them a bunch of blind guides leading the blind. You following me? Okay. Hey, I love you. Hope you have a great day. Sorry these have been so long, but they are about a pretty important thing. Have a great day. Bye-bye.